So in the series on Czerny Bach, comparing its metronomization for Bach's inventions to nine performances of the last, let's say, 80 years, we arrive now at number nine. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, they are linked in the description box. And it's an interesting, um, this one, because it's the completely reverse of last time. Last time, if you remember, number eight, we had two performers who almost reached a single beat not entirely but they were there so we had a discussion about what that could imply what the implication would be for the entire concept um, and so the conclusion was very clear before you jump on the into the comment section saying like yeah but it's, this proves a single beat is just correct and just right it doesn't prove that because it's first of all a music that you have to be able to sell to uh, beginners it's easy music in, 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 in the own words of Czerny and more importantly um, the average of the performances was still 78 percent so in other words you can never take the exception as to um, you can never lift the exception into a rule for the for the entire team an exception is an exception and even here it was not an exception Lizitza and Meyer were outliners but um, I have no problem to say that in some cases, single beat, of course, is uh, possible. Um, here, however, the reverse is the case. This is a piece where I would say 126 to the quarter note. We're talking here about um, the piece here, number nine. This is uh, the end of the eighth in Chinese edition. 126, Allegro con Spirito. 126 is a tempo that... I mean, it's pretty fast when you would play this in single beat, but it's doable. Um, we talked about the Sonate Facile of Mozart last time, Moschlus 152 as well for the quarter note. Nobody plays that, but 120, 126, that's a tempo that you hear that piece played. And so with the 16th notes, that would be okay. Also here, a 3-4 uh, bar structure, time signature. Remember last time I said 3-4 is not often used for... In the same way as 4-4 four, four, and especially 2-4 where you add like a more dense harmonic structure or faster note values than just 16s, 3-4 um, goes more to 3-8 then. And there is, a, there is are some uh, episodes here, I think number 6 or 5, just go back, we have two pieces in 3-8 and it's it feels sometimes when you go through the inventions this way that as if Bach really wants to give different um, uses, just, use suggests is that okay? So it makes different use of similar time signatures. So we had three, four in the previous number eight, which is a very open, normal, allegro kind, kind of a notation here. It's a little bit different. You see, of course, those are Czerny's indications, the articulation and the um, here, the gap, but it makes sense. A jump of a sixth upwards as a kind of exclamatio in the rhetoric uh, way of thinking, where you have to emphasize, so you want to emphasize the higher note by a little articulation. So suddenly, where three, four in the, in the, in the, in the and the number eight was just like a regular first beat strong, second and third beat a little bit less, third beat maybe a little bit more like a very traditional way of playing. Here you have a different way of, uh, of notation. Suddenly the third beat becomes really accentuated um, or even an eighth note on the first beat. So um, here also Czerny rightfully marks this with an accent and this is a note that on an organ, clavichord or harpsichord you would give not legato but as an upbeat like bam, bam. So this gets an accent, it's also syncopation on top of that. So here you have clearly a piece where the emphasis is maybe still on the quarter note but much slower than in the previous invention. You can even say that you start to think in eighth notes, but that's of course a question of what do you feel more comfortable with. At the end, a piece of three, four can be much slower, but still needs to have a kind of quarter beat structure, even though the distance between the two quarter notes um, can be of course made larger. Okay, having said all of that, if we go and watch to the overview before I give you the result, it's interesting to see because here we have an average of 45%. Remember in the previous, number eight, the fast one, 
we had 78% on average, here's 45%. Well, you could say that's not consistent at all. Of course not. The point being is that none of these players, including myself, did check Czerny's metronomization to start with, which makes the whole thing so interesting. If we talk about the Hameklavier Sonata, everybody knows the problem. Everybody checked the metronome marks. Should have checked the metronome marks. Certainly, if you talk about the problems of metron metronomization in the case of the Hameklavier Sonata, everybody knows there is a ceiling, there is something, uh, the goal. For us, of course, it's a different story, but that's another story. But here, none of them, at least to my knowledge, went to Czerny to check Czerny's metronome mark. They were not like Chopin, who did, by the way. So that makes the case very interesting. So when none of the averages there reaches even close to single beat and only four or five, um, in four or five instances, some players reached single beat in an extremely fast uh, performance, uh, yeah, then we might have to reconsider the way that Czerny metronomized. That's, of course, the whole point. And so when we are here on 45% on average, even Lizitsa is 52 eh? Uh, so 41% Lizitsa is 60% below Czerny. So I know the disclaimer is always in her on her channel for the invention she made the disclaimer. I'm playing these pieces as fast as I can. I'm not sure I convinced that in this case she did. Uh, though you may say like what's the fastest musically also. I mean this makes no sense in single beat as we will see later. Okay. Um, before um, saying anything else, let's check on the overview as always and see what the performers had to say about this invention. If I take you back to the overview here, it's it's interesting eh, to see that all these players play much slower than Czerny and Holbeat. So, and also, but that's a side remark. If you hear, if you listen to Lizitsa, the music forces her, I think. I mean, I cannot look into her head and I don't want to be like uh, this, uh, condescending or whatever, but the music forces her it's a very sad piece of obviously it's f minor it's like it forces her to go slower slower but you see that that musicians who have a tendency to play very fast and and certainly in the classical repertoire to go like this put the slider on as fast as possible that when they go slower they struggle a lot with basic things like articulation i mean the articulation in her performance is really not okay she she, she's struggling to find something that makes the piece work and so she 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 feels like going into the path of articulation but it's 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 not okay it's not good it's actually very bad to say so i'd say this as a side remark because so many people say yeah you'll practice a little bit if you go slower if you play a sight readable tempo yeah and and i mean we have to do the same thing with beethoven or mozart to give 
individual quality to the individual tones make articulations there and then things become very exciting i'm not saying that she would not be able to do that when she would really um you know dedicate some time to that but you see she takes herself outside the comfort zone like playing fast guys is super easy it's super easy it's just practice a little bit and then you don't have time anymore to do anything and then your audience will get get this rhythmical pulses constant constantly you know and they're actually they're actually used to it. it's like Quan said says one in, uh, in one part in his book like when you're used to too fast performances when you go back to regular tempi then it you have to accommodate because it feels like your tongue is used to more to 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 taste too spicy meals and so you have to get used to normal meals and so that's the same thing that happens here so of course what is interesting now is to see what this piece sounds in whole beat and what this sounds in a single beat so if i'm not mistaken just from memory i've taken koopman who is at 47 percent so i just need to be sped up a little bit and i have taken giza kink normally his, his tempo his tempo his tempi are all over the place but i've sped them up um that recording at least 33 percent so without further ado here's the result So even here at the end, you hear him slow down a little bit, like pulling the brakes because he was the fastest. Now, I have to say, if you ask my opinion, it's not relevant here, but the journey tempo and whole beat is pretty fast. I, I think this is kind of, uh, well, a dodge notation, certainly in com combination with the, with the character or the piece, but that's besides the thing. It's up to you to, 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 to see the whole of the inventions and we just take these as a whole series. Also, I don't want to give the impression to people that I just take one piece or another that just fits my theory. No, we take all 15 and we see where we end. And again, guys, this is a very interesting comparison um, that is, well, that can help you understand also the other metronomizations made not only by Czerny but by a majority of composers in the 19th century because what Czerny did it was a practice that others did as well we, you didn't have these little islands there where Beethoven had his own way of metronomizing and then you have Czerny and you have Chopin and you have Schumann and they all had different systems and different tempi and different ideas of, of notation and Italian tempo words there were differences but it's remarkable if you see the metronomizations throughout the 19th century and certainly also for pieces that editors later like even below um published so from beethoven or or early music as they consider that how similar the tempi are that they give you can really draw a line tempi evolution tempi went like that and performance practice but the knowledge still was there there was a system that an allegro was not for beethoven 88 and for schumann i don't know for similar notations for similar pieces having said all of that we are going to uh, continue this to the next one so there are still i think six to go and um, let's see where we end um hope this was helpful to you thanks for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and then we see each other very soon again bye